All right, so welcome to the, the first business meeting recap. We kind of hope that these videos will, will be integrated into a little bit more of the life of the church to increase our communication. But in this last business meeting we held on Sunday, the 28th of October, 2018, we covered two main areas. The first one was voting, and the second one was, was vision. The first area of voting, we'll start up here, was for the 2019 nominating committee. This committee elects people that will go out and elect committee leaders. So we voted on these people. It's Larry Shin, Deidre Northern, Robin Harmon, Kathy Vogel, and Diane Harp. All of those, those nominees were accepted and they will be getting together and identifying people in the congregation, new and old, to go serve on different ministry teams. Next, we covered the 2019 budget. We voted on the budget. Just to give you a picture of the budget, in 2017, our, our annual budget was $164,000. In 2018, it increased first to $193,000. But midway through the year, we identified we needed to add more staff. And so the budget was adjusted or amended to $237,000. And then our 2019 budget was increased by 6% or proposed to 249,000 and that budget was, was approved. You can get that information, the detail of that budget, it's available to anyone, it's open. Just email the church office at office at ycc.org. The next two things we went over were the chapel Overflow, we're, we're actually going to be doing some overflow in the chapel towards the end of this year. It's kind of exciting. We had 232 people here this last Sunday. I think that's the most we've ever had. We broke 200 back um, a month ago, had 202, and then today, was, or this last week, it was 232. So we need more overflow, so we're going to be overflow people into the, the chapel and it requires some equipment upgrades and some things like that. So $3,000 is approved to upgrade that. It also means that some work is going to be done upstairs to make room for more children in the children ministry. Uh, the next one is storage. This is a storage shed that we're putting out on the, the back part of the church here. And uh, this is going to be a project that's done by and led by our, our deacons. That was, a, I think, a $2,300 proposal that was approved as well. Now let's jump on to vision. When it comes to vision, we covered three areas. Mike Shabel gave a report on the building program. We, at that point in time at the meeting on Sunday, had not yet hired our architect, but we now have as of yesterday. And our architect is Doug Warman. And so we're excited to work with him. He came well, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, in, recommended by a number of different people. So we're excited to work with him and continue to work with AKS Engineering. So uh, they're gonna help us get through the feasibility process with the town and with the county that will help us to move on to the permitting process. So it feels like the things were a little slow getting to this point, but we, we believe this will help things move forward pretty quickly and help us to get some more solid figure and information and a time frame and a plan for the building project. Pastor Joe, who starts in January, was here. He flew in um, for a few days to spend time with the students, spend time with parents and, and the church as a whole. He gave an update on the youth ministry. And so um, if you are interested in connecting with Joe at all, his email is joe at yakultcc.org. And then lastly, I spoke on our church growth mentioned um, we have an increase in numbers and with this increase it really requires a couple things um, with more people here um, our church kind of really trying to break that 200 barrier that oftentimes churches struggle with so i talked a lot about that and the, and the two key areas i covered were communication which is why you're getting this video and also change and how important um, both of those things and our energies put towards both communication and what it means to to change and adapt and to grow with what the Lord is doing in our in our church body uh, and not be shrinking back because of our fear of change and so we talk about some things that that we all can do to accommodate for the the increase in people that's coming on a Sunday for example it's easy we can park out 
at the school, we can park in our extra parking, we can leave our, our spots in front of the church available for our seniors as well as for our visitors. Another thing that's easy for us to do is change where we sit. Um, first off, move forward and sit next to people so there's extra seats in the sanctuary. But then when we come to this overflow in a few weeks, um, I'm just going to be asking anybody who is willing to, um, to go into the chapel and participate in the worship service more as a digital experience than a live experience. It's going to be held at the same time, but we're just going to project the sermon and the worship into the overflow area. It's not ideal, but we don't have any seats, so it's it's a necessity. So we, we all are, have to be comfortable with, with that. So um, the other area of change that we're going to have to deal with is the, the, the change of our mentality towards church. A lot of times we just think of church as a Sunday morning experience or a Sunday morning worship service, but we have instilled growth groups over this last year, our small group ministry, and not quite half, but a good portion of our, our church is involved in, in growth groups or in some small group connection outside of a Sunday morning experience. And so we're wanting to elevate in our church's mind the, the value of our growth groups, because this is a place where people can come and connect. Because with 200 people here or more, it's impossible for um, us all to be able to talk to everybody we'd like to talk to and connect with everybody we'd like to connect to. And so we want people gathering in small groups during the week. It's rows on Sundays and circles the rest of the week so that they can have time together for prayer, opening up God's word for Christian fellowship and friendship. So those are just some things that we talked about and um, hopefully we'll have more. This is a little bit more than I wanted to say for this first one, but we'll just end it here at this point.